Fortnite made all the headlines recently by completely destroying the game, live with players still inside it, and then shutting it down in preparation for the release of Chapter 2, a fresh take on the ever-popular Battle Royale that includes new locations, weapons, mechanics, quality of life improvements, and apparently, bots. After it was hinted by Epic themselves in early October, there are now AI bots appearing in the Battle Royale matches, and it's received a mixed response from the community, because it's impossible to please everyone on the internet. But this saw me reinstall the game to find out what it was all about and how well they operated. I'm Tommy Thompson, and in this episode of Design Dive, let's talk about the inclusion of bots in multiplayer video games and why it's a great idea to add to a game like Fortnite, but also the challenges faced and considerations that need to be taken when making it work within an established online ecosystem. Now, when you start Fortnite Chapter 2, your first match is filled with bots and it's built as a tutorial to help you play through and win a solo match. I haven't played Fortnite since the end of Season 5, and while I managed to nab many a solo and squad win back in the day, the game shifts so drastically that jumping back in when you haven't kept an eye on it is incredibly daunting, and hence why I lost interest. But when you come back in for the first time, it allows you a bit of space to figure out how all the new mechanics work, such as swimming, fishing, hiding in shrubbery, and using a variety of vehicles that are lying around. And in amongst all this, you're going to bump into AI bots that are running around, mostly mining for resources, and have absolutely terrible aim, allowing even for me to kill them with a sniper rifle, which almost never happened even when I was good at Fortnite. And it's this entire exercise that quite explicitly points out one of the biggest benefits of introducing bots to an online-only game like Fortnite. It's a great source for training new players. Games that only provide online multiplayer modes anticipate that players will simply figure out how to play the game by sitting down, jumping into a match, and finding their feet. But it's seldom as straightforward as that. It's no longer the case that you can immediately understand all the inner workings of a game on first passing. You need to figure out the variety of different components that define that experience. This could be different weapons in Rainbow Six Siege, to figuring out the best locations to land in Call of Duty Blackout, or the operators in Apex Legends. In fact, none of these games provide offline modes that reflect the core multiplayer experience using bots. Black Ops 4 only provides them in split-screen team deathmatch and free-for-all, while Rainbow Six Siege has terrorist hunt and the situation missions, but the AI in these modes are limited in their gameplay functionality and cannot take control of the operator classes that are the crux of what Siege is all about. What this means is that when you start playing these games for the first time, you're immediately cannon fodder to anyone who has more experience than you. Sure, you're going to be at a disadvantage when you're playing a game for the first time, but it's difficult to build up the knowledge and skill you require in a battle royale when you're being killed within 30 seconds of hitting the ground. Or alternatively, landing in a safe area, scooping up items, only to be shot in the head from afar as soon as you approach the next circle. And this is a problem that only continues to grow as these live service games continue to flourish. Games that are constantly trying to drive new players towards them while they've been active and building their player bases for months if not years previously. Providing an offline equivalent of that core game experience that allows you to run around, get a feel for the mechanics, try out weapons, and also get a grip at fighting enemies that actually reflects how the game plays online is something that most games simply ignore, and I imagine is what turns people off these games pretty quickly. All that said, AI bots don't successfully replicate how humans play games typically, given these AI creations are built and designed to operate in a more traditional capacity. No 360 quick scope in here, kids. And that sadly means you're still kept at arm's length from the reality of how this game plays online. Ask anybody who plays fighting games about the disparity between offline modes and human versus human fights, and you're going to get a rant, guaranteed. That might end up being an episode somewhere down the line. But anyway, now while I stress this in an offline context, there is value in providing them in online game modes. You can provide a balance of skill level for incoming players potentially even allow for them to get a couple of wins early on, and over time as their skill grows, you could disable the bots from the experience, which is a point I'll come back to later. Truth is, live service games, especially battle royales, are notoriously bad at onboarding their players, largely because so many battle royales are developed in a hurry to get that sweet, sweet free-to-play money. It's interesting that the other big PC and console-based free-to-play genre, MOBAs, are actually pretty good at catering to new players, with League of Legends and Dota 2 providing player versus AI modes that allow you to get to grips with it before joining other humans. 
This is immensely valuable for someone like me, who is, by MOBA standards, clinically dead. Yet, funnily enough, Fortnite is not the first Battle Royale to do this, and it might not even be the first time it's happened in Fortnite. The mobile version of PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds has had bots in it since launch, while it's long been suspected that Fortnite's mobile version had something similar. In both cases, it's accommodating for players trying to play a game with rather rich mechanics on a touchscreen. Meanwhile, other multiplayer shooters such as Gears of War recognise that first-time players often abandon the multiplayer if they didn't get kills in their opening games. Hence, they deliberately populate your first multiplayer matches with bots and gave you damage boosts such that you get a chance at scoring some kills. On that note, Gears of War should be commended given that it has provided the option to play skirmish matches since Gears 2 against AI bots, and both Gears 4 and 5 had dedicated player versus AI game modes in multiplayer. But they also serve another purpose, and that brings me to my second point. There's nothing worse than playing a round of multiplayer and your team is outnumbered. Either the matchmaking hasn't found enough players, or that one guy decides he's had enough and rage quits anywhere from 10 minutes to 10 seconds into the current match. As soon as that happens, you're at a huge disadvantage, and either you're going to have to find a way to overcome it, or you're just going to get steamrolled by the enemy team. Adding bots into the mix can help address that imbalance. It doesn't rectify it entirely, given an AI bot is often written to lack the same level of competence as a human player, but you can nonetheless take advantage of it in order to have a fighting chance against the other team. This is great in recent games such as Gears 5, where players that drop out of Horde mode are replaced by bots. Which is fantastic, given the average Horde match is actually pretty long. Sure, a bot isn't the same as having a human involved, but they're actually still pretty vital. They help distract enemy AI from targeting you, and, in my experience, are more likely to come over and try to revive you if down than actual human players. And of course, there are issues of connectivity and overall player count. You might be playing in a game where the servers in your region aren't as populated as they are elsewhere in the world, or you're like me and have wooden internet that makes it impossible to have consistent connections at certain times of day. Beyond all that, there's the reality that these online games are built to be disposable. Try jumping back into older online-only games and see how populated your matches are. Can you fill a lobby of the original Titanfall anymore? I can't. Oh, and the other unspoken thing when it comes to adding bots, it speeds up matchmaking. When you're only looking for maybe 50, 60, 70 players instead of 99, it can shave time off between matches and gets people back in the game faster. All that said, I can understand if people get frustrated if they suddenly lose due to bots filling up a PvP match, hence I think there are issues that need to be balanced, I'll come back to that in a minute. But I think the most important fact is that putting bots in for new players or to fill up servers is great, but the real trick is enabling greater accessibility. AAA games seldom really consider the broader audience that would ideally like to play the game but cannot due to a range of factors. Many of these online games are built with the intent that this is your primary game. A lot of people own a gaming device solely to play their favourite online shooter, or say a sports game like FIFA, but there are also large sums of people for whom this is something they have limited time to engage with. People maybe go to college, have jobs, or even have families to take care of, and want to be able to participate in their hobby without other players in the game effectively pushing them away given so much emphasis is placed on established skill. But perhaps more critically, there are people who may never be able to play at the expected skill level of the game, and it's outside of their control. Players with disabilities have just as much a right to participate in games as anyone else, but quite often, games are not built to accommodate for them, because most action games are predicated on skill, which in turn is, often unintentionally, ableist. By introducing bots of various skill levels and even tweaking overarching game systems, you could cater to people for whom it would be otherwise impossible to play these games. There is huge potential for games to better accommodate disabled players, and AI could play a huge part in making that happen, so this is something I may well return to in a future video. Now, while I do think it's a great idea to populate online games with AI bots, there are issues that need to be considered given it can break the experience a little bit. Not just in how they work, but the message it sends or the issues they create. First things first, if you're going to put bots in there, tell players you're doing it. I know we like to think that sliding bots in there to help players get better at the game is great, but not telling them you've done it amounts to subterfuge. Really weak and not that interesting subterfuge that most people will get over in a heartbeat, mind you, but you're bound to get someone with opinions who becomes a wee bit of an armchair crusader and yells about it on their own little corner of the internet. Plus, if it's readily apparent that's what you're doing, you're more likely to annoy your players rather than make them feel good about their accomplishments within the game. 
which was pretty much the response when Mario Kart Tour came out on mobile. Do you remember that? That was like a month ago. Secondly, if you're implementing bots, then make sure you allow for an opt-out for players, especially at higher skill levels. If it's clear, based on the skill-based matchmaking system you're operating, that these players would be better off shooting each other than bots, don't put them in there. If anything, it becomes a system they can game for easy kills and resources. Unless it's Titanfall 2, where bots are a core part of the multiplayer experience. No, I'm not angry at you right now for not playing Titanfall 2. I suspect that even in circumstances like that mentioned earlier, with players in unbalanced matches and with shoddy internet, would still rather take their lumps as it is than let their pride take a hit for winning a match with a bot in it. The third thing is tied into the second, in that you may well start to phase bots out the longer someone plays the game. It makes no sense to put them in again if the player has a consistently good run, but conversely it could make sense to drop them back in if they're having a really bad time of it. This also comes back to the issue of telling the player that you're doing it, and the need for the opt-out as I imagine someone's delicate ego and in turn their controller could take a beating if they start seeing bots repopulate within their online matches again. Conversely, you might never want to play with people and always play bot matches, because people are the worst. If that's the case, don't punish players for opting to take that approach and instead provide alternative ways to achieve unlocks typically tied to multiplayer XP. This is far from a settled issue and I imagine there'll be many a complaint in the coming months, but it seems like Fortnite is approaching this in a lot of positive ways. I genuinely believe that having more AI bots, irrespective of how feature rich they are, caters to audiences in ways that most online games simply don't bother to think about. Yes, you could read it as the death knell of Fortnite because the servers can't populate anymore, or just that more people can potentially grab a victory royale. Like I said earlier, I haven't played Fortnite since the end of Season 5, and while I managed to nab many a solo and squad win, it was nice to come back to some more bot-heavy matches to help me get a feel for the game all over again, and then to immediately lose the next two games afterwards that were just full of teenagers. Thanks for watching this episode of Design Dive. This was a short and sweet video that wasn't planned until I started reading about all this Fortnite bot jazz last week. But I hope you all enjoyed it nonetheless. Be sure to like, subscribe, watch all the other videos on how bots are actually made in video games, and even join these wonderful Patreon supporters too. 